Hello everyone. In this video, we will illustrate how to apply PCA by using a very simple data set. In our case, the data set only has two observations, which we note by A and B. And the observations are given here. What we will do is we will determine the principal components of this data set by searching for the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of the variance covariance matrix. So we start with question A. So in question A we say that the standardized versions of A and B are denoted by X values. However, if you look at the data points, these are not standardized. They have not mean zero, for example. You can clearly see that. So we have to start from the observations as we have it here and then determine a transformation so that we can transform the data into X values which are standardized. So assume that we have in the say normal setting, we have two variables y1 and y2. So a and b are both realizations of two variables y1, y2. And therefore we say that a is y11, y12 and b is y21 and y22. So we have data points consisting of a first component and here we have a second component. What we will do is we will determine the mean and the variance of these columns. So we start with the empirical mean. The mean of the first component, say the empirical mean of y1, is denoted by y bar 1 and given by y11 plus y12 divided by 2. No, this has to be y21. And this is equal to 2 plus 1 divided by 2, which gives you 3 over 2. And similar, you have the empirical mean of the second component, which is y12 plus y22 divided by 2, which is also 3 over 2. And then you clearly see that the data is not standardized because the mean is not 0. Okay, let's continue and determine the empirical standard deviation of the first component. We use the formula that we have here in the exercise, which tells you that you just average over the squared differences. So we have S1 squared is equal to 1 over 2 because we have only two observations. Then we take Y11 minus the empirical mean, which is Y bar 1. And then we have the same for y21, which is the observation b, the first component, and we subtract the y bar 1. So we determine the squared distances towards the empirical mean and we average. And if you plug in the numbers, you get 1 over 2, 2 minus 3 over 2 squared and for the empirical variance of the second component we can do the same calculations so now we have a mean and a standard deviation of y1 y2 now we can move from the y values to the x values where we have that this transformation from y1 y2 to x1 x2 2 is given by x1 is y1 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and x2 is y2 minus the empirical mean or the, the real mean divided by the standard deviation. 
So this is the formula on the level of the random variables. If you have observations y1, y2, we can transform them to x1, x2 by using the, stand, the empirical mean and the empirical standard deviation. So in our case, we get the following x11. So the first component of observation A standardized is we take the observation minus the empirical mean divided by the standard deviation. And because the observation is 2 of the first component of A, the empirical mean is 3 over 2 and the variance was 1 over 4, we find that this is equal to 1. For the second component, x12, we take the y12 observation, we subtract the empirical mean and we divide by the empirical standard deviation and we find minus 1. If we continue like that, we find that in the x values that a is equal to 1 minus 1 and b is equal to minus 1, 1. In question b, we have to determine the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of the variance covariance matrix of the x observations. We start by determining the covariance, so the covariance S12. So I determine the covariance by using the following formula. 1 over n, where n stands for the number of observations, i runs from 1 to n, so in our case n is 2. We take the observation minus the empirical mean times, again, the observation minus the empirical mean. In our case, the x values are standardized. So this is 0 and this is 0. So if we now use that n is 2, we find the following expression. We find that the covariance is equal to minus 1, and therefore the variance-covariance matrix is we have 1 on the diagonals because the data is standardized, meaning the variances are always equal to 1, and we have minus 1, that's the covariance, on the off-diagonal places. We then have to search for the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues, and we do that with the following formula. So this is the equation we have to solve. So if alpha is the eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, then this should satisfy this equation. So we can now plug in the variance-covariance matrix and then try to solve. We get these two equations and from the first equation we get alpha 1 times 1 minus lambda is equal to alpha 2. If you now plug in this expression into the second equation, we find the following. If we then assume that alpha 1 is different from 0, we find. And this gives you the following equation. So we find that either lambda is 0 or lambda is equal to 2. So we have two possible eigenvalues. And now we determine the eigenvectors that correspond with lambda is 0 and lambda is 2. Assume that alpha 1 is the first principal component. 
So if alpha 1 is the first principal component, then it should correspond with the eigenvector where the eigenvalue is the largest, because the eigenvalue is the variance of that principal component, and we always start with the one that has the highest variance. And that means that we start with lambda equal to 2. So in order to find the first principal component, we have to solve the following equation. We know that the variance covariance matrix multiplied by the first principal component is our eigenvalue, which is 2 times that principal component. Moreover, we want that our principal component is standardized, so we have that the norm is equal to 1. So we have to solve these two equations. And then we find that this relation must hold between the components of your first principal component. If you then take into account the second condition, we find that alpha 1, 2 is 1 over square root 2 and alpha 1, 1 is 1 over square root 2. So these are your components of your first principal component. So alpha 1 is equal to, we need a minus sign, here it's equal to minus 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2. In order to determine the second principal component, which we know by alpha 2, we solve the following equation. The variance covariance matrix times alpha 2 prime should be equal to 0 times alpha 2. So this is equal to the 0 vector. And that second principal component has to be standardized, so we have that this holds. So this we have to solve. Again, we plug in the expression we have for the variance covariance matrix. We find that alpha to 1 is equal to alpha to 2. Using also this condition, we find that alpha to 1 is equal to 1 over square root 2, and the same holds for alpha to 2. So my second principal component is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. Let's put all this information in a plot to see what we actually did. In the standardized system, A and B are located here and here. We had our first principal component, which was minus 1 over square root 2 plus 1 over square root of, of 2. So that principal component or that observation is somewhere here, alpha 1. So this is the direction of the first principal component. For the second principal component, we had two times the same value for the x1 and x2 value, so it was something that is like this. So we have alpha 2 here. And then you see that the first principal component is on the line that connects A and B. It means that most of the variation between A and B can be explained by the alpha 1. And in this very special case, actually all the variation of A and B is captured by alpha 1. And remember that lambda 1 was equal to 2. What is lambda 1? Lambda 1 is a variance of your first principal component. But in this case, we have a data set with only two observations and with only two dimensions, two variables. If the data is standardized, the total variance is equal to 2. 1 for the first component, 1 for the second component. In total, we have a variance of 2. For the first 
principal component, we find that the variance is also equal to 2. Otherwise stated, all the variance in the data is explained by the first principal component. And you see that very clearly on this figure. All the variation between A and B is on the lambda 1 direction, in the, in the alpha 1 direction. In the alpha 2 direction, this direction, there is no variation if you look at A and B. And that is why lambda 2 is equal to 0. Lambda 2 is a principal component, but it doesn't explain, it doesn't give any information about fluctuation between A and B.